hi. I hope that I can share this lesson in a way that you feel it from my body and not my mind. Um, so it can give you an access point to embody in your guts the, I suppose, intestinal fortitude it would take to learn this lesson if you are a person who has been systematically taught out of be talked out of being yourself and more extreme not just by society right but by your parents who were supposed to talk you through being yourself not out of being yourself so i get an email from somebody recently who said that he saw me on a testimonial page for denise duffield thomas and he looked at my work because he saw that i was myself on that platform <clears throat> and he's a doctor so when you are raised uh, for corporate America like I was and then you are thrown into academia um, there's this this expectation of professionalism that is very sterile and that's not something I ever wanted anything to do with like I got my first tattoo when I was 15 years old because it was literally a tramp stamp I was like this is my like I am not going to corporate America. And back in the day, you couldn't with tattoos, right? But that was like my, I'm showing you now, family. Like that is not me. I would much rather be like a shaman in a hut on land next to the ocean with plenty provided to me by the land and with a belief and knowing that all beings who were supposed to come to me would come through that path and that the land also provided enough for them that would be me that's how my inner world feels that's the kind of place that i do my work from even though i use a medium that i don't love to um have access to that space in myself and that medium would be making videos or sending out newsletters things like that but i don't love marketing and i think that half the reason is because i i've been so traditionally myself that the truth is i actually just feel like i'm getting away with being myself and making money I don't have, I have not integrated a business mind and I don't actually think that I want to. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of hooks come in at me like, oh, you should scale, you are sitting on a gold mine, I can make you reels, I can get you this. And when other people draw from your potential and contact you and say like, oh, hey, there's potential here and pay me to like, you know, pull it out. I get that that's a thing, right? Like I get that some people would want that, but right now I'm in a phase where I want to draw out my own potential from the inside. And it looks more like gardening at my little house than it does um, scaling, I suppose. So <clears throat> I have had a fundamental dissonance about that especially because I can, it is very hard for me to say what I do. Even though I'm classically trained as a psychotherapist, a, a, a coach, I am trained in chakra psychology, Reiki, web, like whole energy body balancing for humans. I am trained in somatic psychology, right? There's many things I've been trained in. And I suppose that my will to be trained was my symbol to the universe that I am a like worthy student of being trainable. But the thing that I do, although it draws from all of those places, is not any of those things. It is different than all of those things in its own way. And it's not something I can easily define. So if you are a person who, ha have, if you've seen the Chosen series, it's awesome. I love it. I'm a huge fan. Whether you believe in Jesus as your savior or like just a regular person, like let's get real. Jesus was a, a real person, right? And the on the ground influence that he had, there's something to say for it that we're talking about it. And you're still denying it maybe if you're that person thousands of years later, right? Um, this chosen series is awesome because it, and it's so makes me feel so normal and not in any way like I'm equating myself to a disciple of Jesus okay or to Jesus in general but in this it, it the disciples like Simon and Paul and John they're all sitting around going like well it's not fair like he gave us this gift but we don't know what to do with it like we don't know how we're doing it and we don't have any understanding of this and they had a lot of questions about that. Like, what the hell are we doing here? Like, you gave us this gift. I don't understand it. I don't, I, I feel that way in my work. 
that it is very hard for me to articulate the gift of knowing that where people are in their inner landscape and how to kind and seeing that terrain and, and kind of walking them to the center of it or to a pinnacle where they can see something that they can't see from where they are. I cannot, that, that is a gift so inward, it wouldn't make sense in the outer world. And to try to define that professionally is kind of absurd. If I heard somebody else, I'd be like, you're a nut job, <laughs> right? Like, what the hell do you mean by that? But I'm in that inner landscape with people and it's real. The invisible is real. The internal creates the external. It's just as real as the external. And we create more of a real reality from the internal than by going and getting things in the external. Because that's when people get dissonant. Oh, this was fake. Like, even though it became real to me, I can't let it in. I can't let it be real because I actually created this from this part of myself out instead of from this part of myself out. And the gap in between is what makes people feel like, oh, I'm a doctor, but I'm a phony. Oh, I'm this thing, but I can't be myself here, right? So my work is to help people get all in themselves so that they can be themselves. But, um, and, and hearing the disciple of Jesus say like, I have, you gave us this gift, but we don't understand it. And, and Jesus not really answer any with any formative understanding but this gift is something they would live for and die for because they believed in so wholeheartedly that is how i feel about my work and there and even though i'm a woman of many words there is no way to articulate the space that happens um i would call it vastness i, I mean there there's a way to articulate it but there's no way unless you're in it and you drop in it for somebody to understand this language, this realm, whatever this is, right? And as a classically trained psychotherapist, I shouldn't be saying that because I'm supposed to stay in my lane as like this mental thing. No, my work in this life is about bringing people who have been taught to kneel constantly to a standing position. And when you stand, it's not comfortable because people will beat on you and hit you the same way that they do when you kneel, which you're trying to avoid by kneeling. But when you're standing, you have to face it. You don't, you take a hit from the front instead of the back, right? But at least you can see it and you can face reality about that hit that you're taking instead of cowering to it. And at least you'll be in a position to maybe if necessary, take a swing back. Not saying that that's the world that we live in. I don't believe in this like spiritual warfare. Like, you know, I don't believe that that's what's happening. Um, I believe that that's happening in the mind. I believe that that's happening on this three-dimensional planet as far as uh, separation, but I don't believe that that is, that's the law of all, right? Like that's just not the thing for me anyway, sorry if it is for you. But um, so I was trying to explain to my like classically trained and music therapy um, psychologist that I actually have my struggle with my business is that I don't treat it like a business. I'm just like being myself. And when other people tell me I should treat it more like a business, I, my circuits blow and I start to fry. And then I'm like, what am I doing? I don't even know what I'm doing. And then I start to question what the hell I do instead of just show up to that space that I do it best in. And she, her reflection to me was she, she wanted an explanation for what I did. She wanted me to work on her. She wanted me to prove and perform and, and do that thing that I literally work with people to stop them from doing for other people. And she told me that because I think that I would have found a way to this particular kingdom assignment anyway, whether I went to school or not, whether I had kids when I was 18 or not, um, and that I, like one day, what my dream is, is actually, if I have my dreams, it is to live a very grounded, quiet, normal life and be a writer and facilitate like twice a year. That would be my dream. Go to an awesome place and facilitate. She told me I needed to be more humble. And I would receive that lesson in the presence of humility. Imagine Jesus humbling somebody. Jesus would not use his words to humble somebody. He would be in his own presence of humility and find a way to, within that other person, 
touch their own aspects of humility. And I'm not saying she had to be like Jesus or she had to do that. But what I am saying is for a second, I felt that squashing that I helped people say, I'm not going to do that for you. I felt that desire for me to be on my knees for her comfort. And I didn't like it. It made me feel like a kid. And it made me feel like I wasn't allowed to go play on the monkey bars. And I wasn't even trying to do anything bad. I was just like trying to play. And somebody was like, you can't do that. What do you think you are? You don't even, you're not strong like that. Well, how the hell are you going to learn how to go on the monkey bars if you don't try? And I was not a person who was allowed initiation. So that sense of being told I needed to be humble by somebody who was not trying to humble me. That's not what it felt like at all. Um... It brought up a lot for me to move, which was great. It brought up a lot of energy for me to move. But one of the things I wanted to share with you is my work is to literally help people not fall when other people would find it more convenient for you to be on your knees so that they feel comfortable. So when the person that was like supposed to maybe be helping me do that looked at me like I was inflated instead of realistic about what it is that I do, which I can't even explain. I just know that I would live and die for it. When I can't explain that, and then I am, you know, told that I need to be more humble because I am not set apart, like I'm not unique. I'm not trying to be unique. I'm just trying to do what I do. It's not unique to me to do what I do. To other people, it might be. Um, but I don't want to set myself apart. It would be much easier theoretically if I had a language for doing what I did, but I really don't. And I guess I do because you're listening, if you're still here and you speak my language, but I don't know that necessarily that she does. And also she's like, my demographic is people who have been narcissistically abused, people who do not know that they have been narcissistically abused, right? Uh, people who are still cowering and going, oh, I can't be myself as a doctor because I was taught that if I was a doctor, I'd have, be, I'd have to be somebody totally different to be worthy of being a doctor, right? The only person who's going to email me and say, thank you for reflecting to me that I can be myself on multiple platforms is a person who has been talked out of trusting themselves. And they're the pers people, and this is the saddest part, that we entrust with our health and our lives and our children's lives, right? So if somebody wants to talk me out of my, my own trust in my own process. And my own process is a very, it's probably the biggest part of who I am. It goes across every aspect of myself for their own benefit or to squash my ability when it's not that I feel uber capable. It's just that I'm not disabled in this area. And there are plenty of areas in my life I am. Like, I'm a mess. I'm not, you know, like, I'm disabled in the concept of, like, I don't want to have a have to work at a business that, like, I feel wrapped around and is all professional. Some people could call that a disability. My ability is to show up to the work and do the damn work. All of the other things disable me in a weird way. So I stick to my process. I trust it. And the only place that I know it from is my insides. And when somebody makes me say, well, you, you, that's not valid, right? Here's the fun piece. And that's why I love quantum physics because, you know, spirit and science are the same exact thing. And one just proves the other over and over again. That's just always what's going to happen. So um, for me to have to prove something that I already know, which is like, this is who I am. And I don't necessarily need to explain it to you. I don't need to cower because you don't like who I am. That's an interesting place to walk the planet from. And it's not what a lot of us are taught, we're allowed to do. But I'm here to say to you that you are allowed to stand in the presence of people who would rather have you kneel. That doesn't mean you have to push them. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, like get on a ladder above them. True leaders lead on the ground. That's my belief. I'm writing an entire book about it right now. I cannot wait till it comes out. It like, it is giving me life. Um, and if my work gives you life in any way, I mean, this book that is happening is giving me life right now. So um, true leaders lead from the ground. 
they're one step ahead of you or one step ahead of the person right behind them on a trail, they are just an expert scout, right? And they, they know the terrain. So in that way, that's like half my work in the inner realm. Like I don't do the pedestal grave shit, you know, most of my demographic is they put people on a pedestal or they throw them to the grave. They do that to themselves. If they're not perfect, then they deserve to die, right? I don't do that with people. We're just like regular people on the ground, blazing the trail. It's all we're doing. It doesn't have to be this serious. It doesn't have to be this special. It's just like, okay, dude, we're walking the path. Let's see what, what it looks like over here. So anyway, my point in all of this is if you struggle, and this is me too, I don't, um, I never want to be a trigger for somebody. If I'm working on somebody and it's relevant, I will touch something that might provoke them for an access opening to something that I see behind that. But lay people, I don't want to trigger. And I saw that one of my, like this chick I worked with years ago must have unfriended me from Facebook. And my first thought was, oh my God, I should hide. Like, what did I do? I did something wrong. I shouldn't be myself. And then I had just this epiphany that like, Stacey, that's literally exactly what you teach. Like, this is great information. Her stepping out of your sphere because you triggered her. And here's the fun piece. Who's going to be ask you to be humble? Who's going to do that to you? Who's going to ask you not to be yourself? Why would they do that to you? It's somebody who has been taught that they can't be themselves and they're getting, they think you're getting away with something. Even if they can't put their finger on it. It's just like, oh, she's just her. <laughs> fucking cunt bag, right? Like they think that you're getting away with being yourself or you're being fake if they're not totally in themselves, right? So anybody who's gonna want to, who doesn't like you for you, it's almost relieving at this point for me because it's good information. I can go, okay, that's great. Moving on now. Like this person doesn't like me. I'm still standing. I'm still standing and I don't have to cower and not and be half of who I am, not saying like I'm all big, but like I don't have to be half of who I am because somebody else doesn't like me and it would be easier for her to see a void where there is presence that she finds jarring, right? So you, my love, are allowed to be yourself wherever you go. Choose appropriate language, obviously. Choose uh, leveled language appropriately um, and potentially appropriate clothing I don't know but you know when I was uh, when we founded the school I totally changed my concept of professionalism in the sense that it was more professional for me on a true level and this is who I always want to stay true to in myself to be on the ground in rain boots with my students than it was for me to wear a skirt and high heels and like sitting at, you know like up there like I was different than them I'm teaching them the land. And for me, professionalism wasn't in the way that I dressed, but in the way I addressed reality. And that's always going to be true for me. So I hope that that can teach you something. If you're still going, oh, for me to be professional, I have to not be myself. For me to be this other thing, you know, I, I have to not be myself. Whatever your gifts are that you're guided to, that is a big part of who you are. Being, your, being absent of yourself within that gift makes you half of of what you could be there so whatever your gift is be there when you gift it you're allowed you don't have to be absent of self thinking oh the real self can't be a, a doctor the real self can't be a lawyer the real self can't be this epic makeup artist right or the real self can't be this person who stays at home and doesn't do anything all day and enjoys just like napping be whatever your gifts are. You're blessed to be a blessing. And those blessings will bless you. So be there when you're there. That's why you've come. I hope this makes sense.